How's it going guys? This is James from Butler Farms coming to you on a very nice afternoon. Um, the, it's been really, really hot and humid here all week. We had some weather come through and uh, it's it's about as nice out here as it can possibly be on a Sunday afternoon. And I'm coming to you, I've been out uh, just looking around at some of the things that I've put out around the yard and um, decided, as I told you in an earlier video, to do a video about my version of guerrilla gardening. Um, it's not, I don't know that there is a true definition of it, but uh, I just use the definition of putting uh, plants just wherever I can find a spot for them. Now, you know that I have a formal garden uh, where things are in rows and like you would traditionally think of uh, growing food, um, and I, but I use other places as well. But while I was out doing this, I was going to show you uh, something uh, that has changed around here. Um, and I didn't expect it, but it is uh, probably for the better anyway. So let me get turned around here. And what you're going to notice is not something that's here, but something that's not. You can probably tell by the shape here what it is that we're looking at. This is where my raised beds were that I've shown you in many of the videos. Uh, where I grow my lettuce, where I grow uh, during one part of the year, I've grown tomatoes and peppers, and uh, you can see here where uh, some of my buckets were sitting beside it. This was not uh, planned. Uh, I told you in one of the earlier videos that I was having trouble uh, getting my uh, lettuce to grow like it used to. I decided to uh, get the soil out and kind of rebuild uh, my raised beds, and when I did, I found out a couple of things. Number one, uh, it was completely full of ants. And um, so as I was digging it out and, and getting down to the bottom of it, uh, I also noticed that the raised beds were completely rotted out. And um, as I uh, was trying to remove the soil, they literally fell all to pieces. So the decision was made to get them out of here. Um, this is in my yard, as you can see. And my wife had asked me several times about moving it and with the fence here and everything it, it was not really a good look right here next to the house um, so it's gone now it, eventually this will cover over in grass but um, you know it, you say well what does this have to do with kind of a grilling gorilla gardening uh, vibe for this video well I, w before it does grow back over I wanted you to see something see that right there and there's another one right there and i'm getting ready to put a few more in this is horrible horrible soil that was under these raised beds uh left over from when our uh, house was built and when it was put in um not a lot of topsoil left not a lot of any good soil. you can see how red and and clay like that there's another one coming up there there's another one right there this is going to be one of my squash beds um these are not just regular yellow squash. Um, I've got uh, some Cherokee tan uh, pumpkins in there. I've got Seminole pumpkins in there. Um, I'm, I can't remember the other ones right offhand uh, that I have in here also. Now the germination was not the greatest in the world and I knew it wouldn't be uh, in this soil. Uh, but like I said, it's a space that I could use um, that won't be here forever. I have the seed and if I you know if I've put 10 seed in here and I can get five plants out of it that produce I'll count that as a win and that kind of goes along with that whole thought process of gorilla gardening so I did just want to bring you up to speed on that and show you um, um, you know part of being able to grow food where you can and where you have opportunity and this is one such place and I'm getting ready to show you some others I finally got through putting out all those plants that I seeded and had in uh, the shop and uh, got some other little surprises that have come up around here too since the weather has turned nice so uh, I'll be right back and I will show you some of those other things all right guys I'm back here with you and uh, I'm down here at one of my compost piles here along the driveway uh, the big wood chip compost pile that was dumped here uh, by a local landscaper that needed to get rid of wood chips and over the years I've added to it and let it keep breaking down used it many many times and y'all seen this in other videos you can see here i'm um this is kind of my little food forest here with my apple trees and my fig trees and blueberry bushes and things like that but 
I wanted you to see uh, this. This was totally unplanned as far as uh, kind of my idea of gorilla gardening goes. And as you can see, these plants that have come up right here and have even started to bloom. Let me zoom in on that and see if I can uh, pull that in a little bit closer. Guys, these are voluntary squash plants. Uh, last year, when we were, um, we, we didn't do too well with squash last year, but we did have some. And this is where I came in through the tops. I came in through um, uh, just leftovers from basically cutting them up and processing them. And this is what's come up and totally unexpected. And when they first popped out of there, I didn't think that they would have the, um, be able, the root structure in this compost to be able to uh, flourish. But you can see how healthy these plants are and uh, it makes sense if you have followed me on this compost and you know how much has been put into it and and what's in it but uh, totally unexpected and i'm gonna let them go uh, and see what happens they're all open pollinated varieties that were thrown out here so we shouldn't get any franken squash um, that i can that i know of so we're just going to let it roll and see and what i've even decided to do is uh, take some of my leftover seeds that i have uh, from uh, planting some of my other squash and these blank areas out here that don't have any uh, obviously you can see where uh, i threw most of my uh, scraps from my squash last year uh, or either they were turned in and under right there i'm going to push some seeds in into this side over here that uh that where none came up and just see what happens um again this whole idea of gorilla gardening you know to me um if i've got the seed uh some of the seed starting to get some age on it as i've said in some of the other videos so i need to use it anyway and if i can get half to two-thirds of the seed to come up and produce then obviously that's a win because this is a non-traditional place guys this is where i've shown you all these piles that were pushed up along our driveway of all this old uh, lumber and, and things that are uh, timber i should say and where you've seen me with my um, with my blueberry bushes and my fig trees and just trying to fill in these holes this is completely and totally wasted space that this came up in i uh, never would have thought to Put it here but i am going to add to this and just see what what comes along let's move on to a different area where i've stuck some plants uh, some of the plants that i started in cups that you've seen that um, i needed to find a place for and, and see where they're where they are all right guys well i'm back here with you and uh, just going to show you a couple more little things now that area that i just showed you um that's kind of, like I said, a little food forest thing. And those are perennials, uh, almost all fruit trees. And I had no intention of planting annuals there, uh, like squash and, and peppers and things like that. But those came up on their own. Um, so that area and the place where I've shown you before where I have my strawberry patch that also has fruit trees around the perimeter, um, a high level and then a mid level with my blueberry bushes and things like that. And then my low level with the strawberries, I am not putting any of my extra plants or seeds in those areas. I don't want annuals in those areas. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I just, uh, I just, uh, you know, I'm letting those perennials uh, kind of take over in there. I'm kind of leaving it undisturbed and letting them do their own thing and uh, not wanting to put added pressure on those areas by uh, coming in there with annuals and doing that. But this is a ditch bank along the road. You can see the old county road out here, uh, right outside here. And this is some of the plants that I had left over. There's pepper and another pepper plant. And on up this way, we have, uh, I want to say, yep, there's a, another pepper plant right there and you can see a bloom uh, coming on it uh, there's also and i'm gonna stay out of the road right now i've got my dogs out here with me and i don't with this lake being on the other end and everybody flying up and down this road i don't want to uh, get them in the road but on this ditch bank up through here i stuck uh, pepper plants i stuck tomato plants whatever i had left over of um of uh of my 
seeding that I had in the shop. Now these are blueberry bushes that I have moved up here and you say, well, what's the difference? Those are, you know, bushes that are gonna stay here. They are, uh, they were mainly put up here as border to close up this hole along the road uh, to give, give me some, uh, basically a, a living privacy fence up through here. Don't know if they'll ever produce blueberries, but uh, they will fill out eventually and close that space up. Um, but um, if they produce, they produce. And it's the same thing uh, with these. I'm just putting them in areas where you would not expect them, where they're not really, I guess, technically as far as gardening goes, they're really not expected to be. And like I said, from uh, the corner right there, all the way up through here and around there are uh, pepper plants there are tomato plants and all different kind of things put in the ground there and you can see that they're doing well because right there that that pepper plant is already blooming and i'll let it go and just see what happens from there so that's really where i wanted to leave it for today uh just wanted to show you uh that and that there's all kind of unconventional ways to take uh, plants whether you have leftover seedlings whether you have uh, some extra seed lying around somebody gives you some plants if you have a little corner anywhere you can uh, st stick plants anywhere and more than likely they're going to produce probably not as well as a traditional garden but whatever you get off of them is more than what you had so i'm going to leave it there and uh, i appreciate you being with me on this beautiful sunday afternoon don't forget to like and subscribe and share. Um, we're still growing every day, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. And um, if you have any questions, leave them below. If you have any comments, I, I would, would love to uh, read those as well. So until next time, this I just tell you uh, God bless. And this is James from Butler Farms, and I'll be seeing you.